Hello Fern fans, we're on day 27 now of having little puppy Fern with us and today we're going to film a video, a continuation to the playlist on YouTube which goes into my take on how dogs learn and if we can understand a little bit better how dogs learn then we can communicate with them and pass our message to the dog and the dog can understand it a lot easier. So what we're going to look at today is uh, sort of the body language that we're using whilst we're asking a dog to do something or whilst we're teaching the command to a dog. Now, I think it was yesterday's video or maybe the day before, I spoke about imagining what you look like from the dog's perspective. Because a dog, a little tiny thing sitting on the floor, looking up at you, up at six foot of you, it sees you completely differently, differently than the way we perceive ourselves and the way we see each other when we communicate with each other. And now if we can start to imagine, imagine what we look like to the dog, and we can sort of try and force what we look like to the dog on the dog by manipulating our body language and our movements and our hands, our legs and, and the face, the facial expressions and all the rest of it. And don't forget that dogs primarily communicate with body language. They don't really use sounds or voice or much other stuff. Everything's done with body or the majority of stuff done with body language. And because of that, Dogs are very receptive to our body language, far more so than they are receptive to our words or to our sounds. Uh, and what a lot of people do is try and, try and use sounds all the time to communicate with the dog. And it's quite ineffective because dogs don't really use that as their primary communication. They use body language. So if we can be aware of what body language we're using and then manipulate what body language we're using, we can change how the dog sees us we can change what the dog sees, and then we can manipulate that. Now, it might be a little bit confusing, but what I mean by that is, imagine if you've got your dog, or if, if there's a dog sitting in front of me now, and I'm teaching the dog to sit. If every time I say to the dog, sit, 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 like that, the dog is gonna learn that every time I put my hands on my hips like that, that it should sit. Now that's okay if you're aware of that and you want that to happen, but quite oftentimes you're not aware of that and you, you're teaching the dog things by accident. Uh, imagine if you're teaching a dog to recall, to come to you when you tell it. What you might be doing is you might have a, a bag of treats on your waist or in your pocket and you might say, Rover, come here, and as you do that you might go to your pocket to get a treat out. What the dog is seeing is you going to your pocket, so it's coming over to investigate, it's sitting at your feet, and then you think it's doing all of that because you've said, Rover, come here. So you give it that reward. What you're actually teaching the dog is, if I do this, and you come to me and sit at my feet, you get the reward. Now that's okay if you're aware of it, like I just said, and you can use that to your advantage and manipulate the dog, but if you're not aware of it, you might be inadvertently training a dog that that means come here and sit and because of that it won't pay attention to the sound or the words you're using when you say Rover come here. That might be a bit of a problem if you've got bags of shopping in your hand or if you're carrying something you come to a road and you want to tell the dog to sit. When you say the words it won't mean anything to the dog because you haven't done the body language thing that the dog associates with that. So it's okay if you know about it and it's okay if it happens anyway, but if you can be aware of it and you can manipulate that and force that on the dog, then you can be far better at communicating what you want the dog to do. Now, to try and explain that a little bit clearer, I'm going to get my other dog out, Darley. Darley's a nine-month-old working cocker, and she's black all over. And because of that, it's quite difficult to see her facial expressions and to see her eyes sometimes. Um, so I apologise if, if you can't see it quite clearly. My wife is going to be filming, and we're going to be going up and down the kitchen or, or something like that. So my wife's going to be moving around, so she's going to try her very best to get everything in and I'm going to try and be in positions where you can see everything. But if you can't see everything quite clearly, I do apologise. We'll keep a few more videos going on this series um, and this is going to go on, on YouTube on a playlist of how dogs learn. And everything step by step by step and progresses on from one another. So we'll get Dolly out, I'll explain what we're going to do. Well, in fact, I'll explain now before we we'll get the dog out. So what I'm going to do is give the dog some verbal commands and the dog should.
do what I, I ask it or what I mean by those verbal commands. Then what I'm going to do is give the dog some body language or hand sign commands without any words and see if the dog understands that. Then what I'm going to do is hand signals and body language so that you can see how they both work together. Then what I'm going to do is chuck a few spanners in the work. So I might say, I might ask the dog to come to me, but I might give the dog a sign for wait or for sit or for down. And we're going to see what the dog responds to. Is it the body language or is it the words that I say? And I am predicting the dog is going to follow my body language rather than the words I say. I have not done this with her before, not done any kind of training like this. So I'm as much in the dog, but I predict the dog is going to go with my hand sign. Uh, if she's really, really, really well behaved and I've trained her really, really well, then she'll probably do a bit of both. She'll be very, very confused. But I don't know what I'm going to see. Um, and then we'll, we'll carry this series on and, and see how we go from there. So we'll go and get the dog out of the cage. Now what I do when I give a dog a command, I always use the dog's name. Um, people thought it was a bit weird at first, but now I've got two dogs, it sort of explains itself because I can say Dolly wait, and I can say Fern, go and do something, or I can say Fern, sit, Dolly down, and do different commands for different dogs. So I always use the dog's name before I give a command. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to give the verbal command and see what she does. I'll explain all that. I just told her to wait then. Dolly, come. Good girl. Good girl. What I didn't say, what, what would be interesting for you guys to do whilst you're watching this video is look at what I inadvertently do with my body language. Um, as I ask the dog to do something, what am I doing that I'm not aware of or what I am aware of that's very discreet? that the dog is going to pick up on. Sometimes I'm manipulating that and I'm aware of it, but there might be things I do that I'm not aware of. I try and be aware of everything, um, but it's up for you, you guys to see what I'm doing, see what the dog's doing, and make your minds up from there. So I can show you now, if I move my left leg in, I know the dog will come to my heel. Because that's a body language sign that the dog's worked on. If I wasn't aware that was going to happen, and I just move my heel, then the dog might do it, and I might be thinking, what's going on? And I might be teaching that the dog, every time I say the word heel, and I do that, that the dog is following this rather than the words. So you need to be aware of what you're doing, and aware of what the dog's seeing, and then you can use that and manipulate it, like I've just done. So, you do that. If, if you're aware that's going to happen, it's great because that's my way of getting the dog to follow me around. Now she's at heel, she'll follow me. If I wasn't aware that was going to happen, it could cause some confusion, because I might say sit, and then she'll follow me. But now, the last command she had was heel, and that's what she's going to do. And that command just came from me, going from that position to that position, using body language. I'm aware of that, and I can use it, but if you're not aware of it, it can be quite tricky. So, we'll go with another one. So I just told her where to sit, I pointed the floor then. I told her where to go with my finger. And then I give another weight sign. So we've done a word of, a word of command for come. I'll, I'll try another one. Dolly heel. Good girl. Good girl. So we know that the, those words of command work with the dog. So now we'll try. Just body language. In fact, we're going to try to do just body language. I'll give her the words of command again, but watch what I'm doing with my body. I'm aware I'm going to be doing it, so if you look at my eyes, in fact, I'll show you now, I can make a heel with just my eyes. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I can make a heel with my hand. 
Good gear, good gear. And I'm aware of that, so let's put them all together. Now imagine if you weren't aware of it, and you were only saying the words heal, but you also did that thing I've just done with my eyes, and I also did that thing I've just done with my hand, you're going to get the same outcome. Got it here? So there I've done all three things together, and I've really clearly passed that message on. But we know that just doing that, good gear, good gear, or me just looking at the floor means heal. So I didn't need to say the words heal, and I don't need to over communicate and I don't need to make a load of background noise for the dog and I'm aware of that so I can use that and if you guys can be, become more aware of stuff like that then you can use it let's see now what happens if I give a verbal command and a different body language command now I predict she's going to go with the body language um, but we'll, we'll see dog it come So I said come, but my body language said don't come, wait there, don't move. And she went with the body language. You could hear me, she could quite clearly hear me. We'll try it again just to make sure it's not a bluff. Dolly come. She was a bit optimistic, she, she sort of came slowly because well, it's probably because I've got a little bit of uh, meat in my hand. But the optimism came, she wasn't quite sure what, not optimism, I um, can't think of the word. The reluctance, sorry, came because the body language was saying, wait there, and, and she's following two different communications. One saying don't come, one saying do come. She doesn't know what to do, and she's following her belly. Um, so hopefully that passed the message on. We can show you how we can do other things just with uh, hand signals or eye signals or body language. So, good girl, good girl. So you don't. I didn't need to say anything to the dog then with my mouth, I said it all with my hands, with my eyes, with my foot positioning, stuff like that. So if you can be aware of that, what you look like to the dog, you can manipulate it, and then we can start communicating really clearly with the dog without all the white noise that the dog's in taxi listening to, and without having to scream across fields. If I want the dog to, the dog's quite good at giving me eye contact because we work on it, if I want the dog to come to me across a field, all I've got to do is this. <laughs> no, no, I haven't, she's just looking at me. Good girl, because that means come and sit in front of me. That means come to me. The dog knows that, so I haven't had to shout across the field, come here, come here, come here, come here. I haven't had to shout over the noise of kids. I've just done this. Good girl, good girl. So we don't need a lot of white noise, we don't need to be competing with other noise sources. If we can clearly communicate using body language and the dog's own language, then we're far better. And it looks ace as well, it? if you can just look at what you want the dog to do, and it does it. So let's work on that, let's work on our awareness of what we look like to the dog, and hopefully our communication and our bond with the dog can be a lot better, more clearer, and we can enjoy the time with the dog a lot more.